And we are live. It's a voice coming to you from behind the book with the picture of the lady. It's the George Espinlove show coming to you live from the funny farm. I'm behind the book. The lady's behind the book, but she's also on the book. So we're here and we, we welcome each and every one of you to the George Espinlove show. And we want you to just sit back because this lady is going to give you some information that perhaps you could take to the bank, literally take to the bank. Uh, it, it is, and, and it's the fourth edition. My, oh my, I remember when it was first written and now here she is in the fourth edition. So you tell all your friends, family, reach out any way you can and tell them that we're streaming live. Yep. We're out. We're laying ourselves out there bare in front of God and everybody one more time to see what happens with this thing. But we are live and you tell everybody, we invite you to come on in, leave your comments. We'll throw them up there on the screen. So Mary can see them. I can see them and everyone else that's watching can see them. Uh, so you just come in and you have a good time with us because I know, I know that it is going to be exciting. Get your notebooks out, your pencils, your papers, your napkins, whatever you want to write on, because I'm sure, I'm sure you're going to find something worthwhile in all this. And so with no further ado, I'm the woman behind the book. She's the woman <laughs> behind the book now. Yes. She's the woman behind the book. <laughs> and I, I've got, I've got one of them too, right here. I've got one of them right here. Yes, you do. Yes, I got one too. So, I mean, we're behind the books. We're behind yes. the books. <laughs> Mary, it's good to have you. Thank it's, you so much for having me back, George. It's been what, seven years? Around there, yes. Actually, I got a Facebook notification of you've been friends for seven years. And I thought, it's time to reach out to George and say, I have a new edition of the book. That's right. That's right. And it, it seems, well, it does and it doesn't. It seems like it was only a week ago. But, <laughs> and on the other hand, realistically speaking, it's been seven years. Yes. Uh, my, a lot of water under the bridge. Some bridges went under the water, but here we are, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a constantly evolving topic. When you do, uh, when you do all these updates, that, that must keep you pretty busy, doesn't it? Yes. I, I'm signed up for Google Alerts for anything to do with unclaimed property and anything to do with my name. Most of it is deceased Mary Pittman's in their obituary notice. Fortunately, it's not mine yet. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm always on top of whatever is coming up and, and going on. So I kind of keep a running log and eventually I go, it's, I need to do an update. I thought I'd ask you that while it was on the top of my head, because <clears throat> if I don't ask it, it can leave pretty quick. Uh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> so tell the folks that are watching, uh, how, how Mary got started in, in, in this thing. I got started because one of the nurses that I work with told me about it and I kind of rolled my eyes. I said, oh my God, you are so gullible. <sighs> Give me the information. I'll show you where the scam is. Very much in a place of pride and ego because I am smarter than she is. <laughs> I'm not going to fall for this. And then I found two listings for my father who died in 2001. And I thought, well, there you go. There's the scam. He died indigent. How would they know he was indigent? How would they know he had family? Maybe I have money. 180 degree turn. <laughs> I filled out the paperwork and which is a little bit more detailed when there's a death involved. You have to include a certified copy of the death certificate. I had to include a copy of my birth certificate. They didn't ask for it, but I included my marriage license to show my name change because I knew that would delay it if I didn't include it. They go, oh, we need something to show the name change and a copy of my driver's license. But five weeks later, I had a check in my hand for over $2,500 and I became a believer. 
What a way to come to become a believer, huh? Yes. <laughs> so you have been a nurse uh, throughout your whole career also, right? Yes. And how long have you been doing that now? We, we don't need to talk about that, George. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. A really, really long time. A long time. Okay. Uh, Decades. And you're, you're one of the, 38 years. 38 years. All right. Yes. That, that's commendable. That's commendable. Uh, I love what I do. Where would doctors be without nurses? Uh, you know, where they, would patients be without the nurses? Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Mm -hmm. so what, what got you started, actually started to sit down and put this stuff on paper? I found a listing for one of the nurses upstairs and this was the sweetest person, but had one of those little black clouds over her head that went everywhere. She went, her mother had died six months later, her husband died. Uh, someone broke into her son's house and shot, but did not kill his dog, that type of thing. And I found a couple of listings for her and I thought, God, if anybody can use a break, it's her. So the next time she was working, I went upstairs and um, we were just chit chatting and she goes, so what are you doing up here? Deep throaty voice for her. I said, well, I have this hobby and I found these listings for you for unclaimed property for missing money. And it was a combination of being ready to cry and speechless. And when she finally composed herself, she said, Mary, I've been getting calls and letters from attorneys and businesses. They all want a lot of money to help me get my money. One guy wants $700, another one wants $2,100. I was determined to find this on my own, but I didn't know where to begin. I said, I will help you. Um, so as I walked away from her, I thought there's probably a lot of people like her that don't know where to begin. And I have all these great search tips. I should put them together in a book, maybe even just a, a booklet, just the little book of missing money. And it started out to be just my search tips, but I kept coming across additional places where unclaimed property is. And when I came across unclaimed child support, I knew I had to rethink what I was doing and include that. So that's how the book came about. Wow. How I, I told you when it comes to me, uh, I can search high, low, left, right, up. It don't matter. There's just no money. <laughs> but for those people out there, where do they begin? What do they do first? The best place to go is unclaimed.org. And that's all you put in, unclaimed.org. If you put in anything else, it'll take you to a site that wants to charge you. Never pay for an online search. This way you can click on any state you've ever lived in. The other site that people may have heard of is missingmoney.com. I don't like that one as much because, first of all, not all of the states participate. So if you live in, um, let's, I think Wyoming is one that doesn't participate and you search through missing money, you won't find anything. And plus it limits it to the first 200 listings state um, nationwide. So it's very limited. You're best to go straight to unclaimed.org and go directly to your state unclaimed property site. It's not always the state treasurer in Minnesota. It's the Department of Commerce in Oregon. It's um, the Department of Lands or something like that. So um, it'll take you directly to where you need to go. And then enter your last name and first name. You don't have to put in anything to search other than your last name and first name. The less you put in, the broader your search. And if you have variations of your name, like um, Deborah, Debbie, different ways of spelling Deborah, put it in and see if any of the addresses match where you've lived. What what are some of the, the the cases, if we call it that, that you can tell us about of, of people searching and finding missing money? I don't always hear from people. I did recently. There was a glitch in the Treasury Department website for savings bonds, and it brought up um, individuals' names, and that was a glitch that they fixed. And I might 
possibly have saved it to my laptop before they fixed it <laughs> and to an external hard drive that's in the safe deposit box, <laughs> possibly. Um, but I found listings for a lady in Pennsylvania. One of them was $500. She had four of them for a thousand and she had 50, five zero listings for $10,000 each. The math on that comes to $504,500. And I found her. <laughs> I actually spoke to her daughter because the lady was um, 74 and I didn't want it to seem like I was trying to do an elderly scam or anything. So I talked the daughter through it. I'm, I said, all I ask is if you could give me a quote for my book. Never heard from her. <laughs> she ghosted me. <laughs> like, You're welcome. <laughs> wow. Uh, how is it? Maybe that's how I ought to ask. How is it that there could be missing money out there for someone without that individual having some inkling that there might be some money out there for me? Well, first of all, it can happen to anybody. Um, I was, while I was playing with possibly doing the book, I was watching the Susie Orman show and I thought, wouldn't it be funny if Susie had missing money? And she did. Well, she was going to be speaking at a charity event for public television. And I decided I am going to go tell her. And I actually wrote a segment for her show too. <laughs> so I went up to her. I position myself to see her when she came in, but not crazy stalker lady fan. Um, and she smiles like, oh, there's somebody who loves me. And I went up and I said, Susie, I'm going to tell you something nobody else here is going to tell you. And she said, what's that? I said, I found missing money for you. Total change of energy. They're, Good. I need it. Kind of like ventriloquist mode, mode, frozen smile. I said, no, seriously, you know, the missingmoney.com site. This is before I was more fluent in it. She said, no. I said, no. She said, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I explained to her what it was and I had printed out her listings. And I said, here's the thing. If Susie Orman can have missing money. Susie Orman's viewers can have missing money too. And her eyes got really big. She goes, that's right. So she ended up inviting me on America's Money Class with Susie Orman. Wow. So, <laughs> so if Susie Orman can have missing money, anybody can. I got a notice from PricewaterhouseCooper. I had unclaimed property from Google for my book. It's like, you can't find me? How about, oh, I don't know, Google my name. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of all people. Google should be able to Google, right? <laughs> really? The, the, in in the states, the, do the feds have? Of course, you mentioned savings bonds. Is there missing money that you can find through the feds also? Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> the federal government. Um, first of all, I found savings bonds for the U.S. Treasury held by the U.S. Treasury. $66,000. Now that's not much in a billion dollar place, but they have money that they obviously haven't claimed. <laughs> I find that humorous. Um, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, when a bank goes under, they guarantee the, say, the amount that was held by that bank up to the maximum. When they don't have the address for the person, they will send it to the, if they have the address for the person, they send it to the state unclaimed property office for keeping for 10 years. After that, it goes back to the FDIC and you lose all right to it. If they don't have the address, then it gets turned over to the state where the bank is incorporated. And who would think to look there? <laughs> now, if... You said now if if you don't contact them or they keep it for 10 years. Right. Uh, do they make any effort to contact you or do they just let the it? The FDIC? No. They turn it over to the state unclaimed property office. Different states like California does not actively search for people. New York does not actively search for people. 
Well, that's not right. Um, <laughs> that, I agree. When one of the legislators from Minnesota found out that the people were just sitting in the office waiting for people to show up to claim their unclaimed property, he enacted a law that said, you're going to look for these people. You're going to try to reunite them with their money. And it can be anything from a forgotten paycheck, refunds, rebates, um, stocks, life insurance payouts, um, utility deposit refunds. The list is almost endless. And so if that money's sitting in a bucket, I call it a bucket. If that money's mm -hmm. sitting in a bucket and they're not in any big hurry to try to find who that money belongs to. Of course they're not because they're keeping the interest on it. So they're making money on your money. And if you don't come along and claim your money, then they get to keep your money too. Until you claim it. Indiana is the only state that will keep your money after 25 years. If you don't claim it by 25 years, nani nani boo boo, <laughs> they keep it. Wow. You need to get up with it like the rest of the states and take that limitation away. Before we went on the air, you you was you was doing some things there on the computer. Uh mm -hmm. whatever you do, some kind of research and this and that. Uh tell me about it. Well, I thought with this being um October 30th and the day of the dead coming up, I thought it would be fun to tell people how to find listings for the dearly departed. Now, this only applies to people who have ever lost a family member, which is everybody. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's not where you search, it's how you search. And I've got a list of these in the book and I'm going to read them. But to give you some examples, in New York, if you enter the estate of, you'll get 559 listings. If you enter just estate of, you get 33,616 listings. So between the two, that's over 34,000 listings that would most likely never be found. In California, the estate of gives you 1,994 listings. Estate of gives you 78,880 listings. Oh my God. You can look under terms like deceased. Exec in deceased in California will get you 674 names. Executor, beneficiary, there's so many different ways you can play with it. You can do POD, which stands for payable on death, um, to the estate, for the estate, um, state of lose the E at the beginning because um, sometimes it gets put in wrong. Um, trustee, executor, beneficiary, no beneficiary, unknown heir, and UNK heir. H-E-I-R, two words on both of those. Who would think to look like that? If you can't find money for your deceased family member, start playing with other variations of how it may be listed. Wow. You mentioned the Day of the Dead. Isn't that the term that you use, Day of the Dead? Yes. Explain that. Dia de la Muerta. Okay. <laughs> Explain. Um, it's a... I believe a Mexican holiday, and I always try to, this topic is so broad that I do try to tie it into something timely. So I thought, the day of the let's day. show people how to find money for dead people. <laughs> so here I am sitting in Delaware. Not dead. Not dead. So <laughs> if I wanted to look for money from my deceased family members mm -hmm. does it does it have to be a specific like uh, a mom or a dad could it be an aunt an uncle grandpa? you can look up anybody you want to you can look up celebrities but to claim it you have to be a legal heir ah okay so because you find it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get it right no not if you're not a legal heir okay Oh, and here's the other important thing for people to know since we're talking about death. Um, 
the named beneficiary on an insurance policy or a uh, or if they're getting royalties or on a retirement plan the named beneficiary overrides anything you have in your will so your will may state i leave absolutely everything to my beloved second spouse the light of my life everything goes to her but if you never change the beneficiary what from your first spouse your money's going to that to that person and if that person has died it's likely going to go to their uh, kids. So your ex stepkids would get your money. Wow. So, so it bears keeping up with. So not only keeping up with the wheel, keeping up with those insurance policy beneficiaries, right? Yes, absolutely. Wow. So here I am in Delaware and I, I, I'm going to go search for missing money. Mm hmm. Where do I start, Mary? <laughs> at, at, at the state treasury? You go to unclaimed.org and click on any state you want to check. So if your parents lived in Iowa, you can check Iowa and see if there's anything there. You can click on any state you've ever lived in, including the U.S. territories of Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, and Guam. So the key there is any state that you ever lived in right? Yes. Okay. But if for some reason they don't have um, your address, then the money goes to the state where the holder of the money is incorporated. Once someone finds some missing money, are they reluctant to let it go quickly? Or uh, do they say, okay, you got me. Here's your money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so much about reluctance. Um, New York is about four months behind on the mail-in claims. Um, usually if you have to mail it in, it means it's more than $300. Um, a lot of the states have made it so that you can claim electronically smaller amounts. California, I believe they just made it so you can claim up to $5,000 electronically. Wow. Um, so it's more of a, a question of backlog. Like if there's been a lot of publicity in their state about unclaimed property and a lot of people have filed claims, then it's going to take a little bit longer than it otherwise would. Now, of course, if you have a lawyer do this, uh, then whatever the fine might be, you're going to lose money because you have to pay uh, the lawyer, right? Right. You should not need a lawyer. So you can chase this thing all by yourself. Uh, yes. What are some of the ways that we can protect ourselves or our loved ones can protect themselves uh, from this happening? First of all, if you have a will, please let your family know. Same thing if you have a pre-need burial insurance or you've paid for cremation ahead of time, please let your family know and what the name of the company is and where it is so they don't have to pay out of pocket. Um, so that's the main thing. Communicate with your family. Update your beneficiary information, both in the will, the name and the contact information for the person. And like I said, for anything to do with insurance policies, um, retirement plans, or any type of royalty. And royalty can include um, books, music, uh, TV stuff, movies, also oil gas, timber, that type of thing. So update that with the, the beneficiary's contact information. Have you ever come across someone that didn't necessarily or wasn't related to someone, but yet that person left that, that person, person A left person B money, uh, and it went on claim because that person never knew? I think that's probably what most of these policies are about. What happened before with the life insurance companies was they were using the social security death master file to determine when an annuitant died, somebody they were paying monthly benefits to, but they were not using the very same database to determine when a policyholder died and they needed to make a payout to that family, to the beneficiary. 
So there was a multi-state lawsuit on that. And the insurance companies now have to check, I think it's at least twice a year, um, and run their policyholder information against the Social Security Death Master file. And they don't have to turn the money over right away. If the money is unclaimed for three years, it's three to five years, depending on the state. Then they turn it over to the state. Do you have any idea, uh, even an inkling of how much money is out there that is missing? <laughs> um, the states currently have about $65 billion. Savings bonds is close to $26 billion. And I said $65 billion, right? Not million. $65 billion. Savings bonds is about um, $26 billion. Um, Social security numbers that don't match the name. Um, it can be a simple typo, or it can be somebody that needed nine digits for a social security card and made them up. Um, there's $1.2 trillion in that. Trillion with a T. So you went, you went from... Billion, 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 trillion. Mm -hmm. uh, that that that's an ungodly astronomical number, isn't it? I yes. mean, for missing money out there. Yes. Uh, wow. Uh, that just that that blows you away. That that literally it does. My goodness. Gracious. And now they're trying to go after cryptocurrency accounts too. Um, the problem is the cryptocurrency is not the same format as the dollar, <laughs> mm -hmm. but they're using the same standard. If there's no customer initiated activity on the account for three years, then it, the account is considered unclaimed or abandoned, and it is supposed to get turned over to the state. Have you, uh, I, asked, I asked the fellow the other night the same question. Have you been found to be a nuisance to any of these 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 states or these these agencies? I found okay the state of Pennsylvania, and this is appropriate too with Veterans Day coming up, has a PDF file that you can print out of the names of people that they are holding military medals for. I found a, the family of a guy who has sixty two medals. I thought, I bet that son and daughter would really like to get them back from the state. And they may not even know that they're at the state. Maybe they were in a safe deposit box and there was no activity on it. So it got turned over to the state. Who knows? But I contacted a local TV station. I said, do you cover Mount Wolf? They said, yes. And I told them about this. I said, and there's um, a couple of other aspects that we could cover as far as the military. And I didn't hear from them, so I sent them a follow-up email. I mean, I think it's a great story. You, you know, you've got the visual. 62 medals, the state treasurer should come out on his own and yes, <laughs> to yes. the person's house and bring it. Um, but I think I tend to be more of a nuisance to um, not so much to the states, but to the media sometimes. You know, if you're not going to use the story, tell me. I'll go someplace else because I believe in it. I believe people need to know this so then they can look and see if their loved one has their medals there. I I, I find that uh, interesting, uh, but yet somewhat upsetting to think that the media, I mean, you'd think the media would be all gung-ho. That, that This is doing the public a service. Yes. By presenting something that an expert has researched and done the work and so on and so forth, you'd think that they, they would be uh, gung-ho, and I mean charge up the hill, full tilt. Uh, yeah, that, that rubs me about six ways from last week. When you, when you, <laughs> you know, because it, yes. it, it's by, we're talking about people and, and people's lives and, and, and mm -hmm. something that could turn someone completely around, uh, lift them out of the dark, deep, dark hole, uh, get their feet on solid ground and moving along. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Yeah, you'd, you'd think the media would be uh, knocking on Mary's door. You, you, <laughs> Mary, you gain more scoop, you gain more information. Or, or at least thanks, but no thanks. The other aspect of this that, that I pitched to them was every single agency that helps the veterans, VFW, um, American Legion, any of them, disabled American veterans, Vietnam veterans, all of them, 100% of them have unclaimed property on the state unclaimed property sites. All they have to do is look and claim it. Now, these are the organizations themselves or, yes. or, or the veterans? The organizations themselves that provide services. Now, why, why <laughs> they don't know this or they're just not interested? I mean, I don't think they I don't think they realize it because everything you hear about unclaimed property is about the individual. They don't address things like um, charities, nonprofits, um, businesses, big businesses, small businesses. I can find over five thousand listings for Merrill Lynch in New York, and that only goes back. Here's the thing with New York: it, the listings only go back to 1985. Merrill Lynch Incorporated in New York in 1915. So there's so where, probably a lot more. Yeah, where where are those records? I mean, they're archived somewhere or just went by? They must be archived oh, yeah. because it only goes back to 1985. So if you want anything in New York prior to that, and I believe probably most states have some type of limitation like that too, in very, very, very fine print somewhere. Um, then you have to ask for the records to be searched. Do Do you know? Speaking of the veterans and and all the organizations, uh, do you know if if any of the veterans organizations themselves, BFW, American Legion, so on and so forth, uh, has anything like a person like you? Do any of them have someone somewhere that says, look, let's let's check things out for these veterans? Uh, do you know if they have anyone that does I, that type I of don't thing? know that. I don't think they realize that they have money, so therefore there's no reason to have a person to look into it. <laughs> wow. The other aspect that I pitched to this news station. It was WGAL. Um, <laughs> um, I'll call him out on it. Was that the VA holds policies that holds mail that is returned to them uh, for death benefits, for dividend payouts, or for policy uh, payment reimbursements. There's approximately 3,000 policies that they're holding worth 30 million dollars i think that's newsworthy my goodness didn't hear from him. okay i i i just uh i mean that that just jars my slats uh, yeah uh to think you know 30 million here several billion there seven billion there and then you got this whole bunch of trillions over here uh mm -hmm. my my goodness, what what it would do if if uh, if this money was released into the economy, just, just yes, exactly what it could do for the economy. Uh, and the thing is, you never know when somebody's struggling. A lot of people put on a very brave face and oh no, everything's fine. No, no problem. And they're really struggling to make ends meet. So something like this can just be money from heaven. Everybody should look. Yeah. You have nothing to lose by looking. And the first place we would look is, again? Unclaimed.org. 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 Anything book. other than that that makes you, um, that wants you to pay a fee, you're on the wrong site. Don't pay a fee. Don't pay a fee. Right. Don't pay a fee. If if you don't hear anything else tonight, remember don't pay a fee. Uh, some someone that would really get serious. I mean, no, I don't know of anyone 
that's gotten as serious about this as you, Mary. <laughs> it's my own little niche. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Uh, and I, I believe God gave you this little niche because uh, I agree. Uh, goodness gracious. I, I'm looking in here. Charities and churches, even yes. even churches have yes. unclaimed properties. And yes, from perhaps people that left them money, uh, Poss possibly um, life insurance. The Cincinnati Public Library, part of the savings bond thing, um, the stuff that's visible, they have $64,000. I contacted the director of the foundation. She said, how could we have that much money and not know about it? I said, I think somebody in the goodness of their heart did these savings bonds for the library. Who knows how long ago it was? Um, maybe somebody who was working that was managing it would, you know, change jobs or passed away or something. But it's very clearly the Cincinnati Public Library. And I've reached back to back out to her a couple of times to see how the process has gone. And she too has ghosted me and not replied. But the best story I had as far as the savings bonds, and it's a relatively small amount in my mind with 64,000 to the Cincinnati Public Library and 45,000 to the San Diego Zoo. This was only 15,000. It was to the, um, it was to a charity in Boston and they get their orders from the Vatican. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. But what the lady told me, what I said, it's, you know, not really a lot, it's $15,000. She said $15,000 in the mission world is a huge amount of money. That will run an orphanage for a year. Mm. Mm. So she was going to get back to me after they after they got the check from the treasury department, that was only a couple of months ago. And well, it's treasury department, so it may take a while. But then I also, sometimes it's just a hunch. I look them up on the state unclaimed property site and I found like five more listings for them. So it was a double win. Do, do you think, uh, you say like when people ghost you, I like that, they ghost you, <laughs> I mean, they, they just go away. They just do not reply, yeah. it's as though, they don't exist. They ghost you. I like that. <laughs> Do you think that when people ghost you, perhaps uh, someone got in their head, got in their ear, uh, perhaps? This has to be a scam. Uh -huh. oh, 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 just just don't talk to her. It has to be a scam. There's no way. Well, yes, there is. <laughs> um. Yeah, I absolutely think that that is what happened. And with some of these big organizations, they have, uh, I'm sure they have a team of lawyers tucked away somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they they catch wind of it. Uh, and uh, you don't want to do it that way. We'll, we'll take care of it for you. And no we'll much. file it for you. Yeah, yeah. No, no fuss. Uh, so, uh, man, I, I just find it... Uh, I, I just find it mind-boggling. I'm, 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 I'm sitting here, and in my mind, Mary, this is what I see. I see people, you know, like, like you see them on the streets of New York, people during the rush hour. That's what I see in my mind. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, how many of those people <laughs> have missing money and don't even know that they have missing money? Uh that's I I think I think the missing money part really messes up my head, but not knowing that you have missing yes. money that that's what really messes up my mm -hmm. head. You know you know what I'm saying? I, I right. don't know if that makes sense or not? But I, I I just find that 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 that's mind boggling to me. Uh, people just don't know, and mm -hmm. they have no idea. And then along comes Mary. <laughs> you know, and, and my little niche. <laughs> yeah. Mary comes along and she rings your bell. Uh, you know, Mary, like the closing bell at the stock market. Yeah. <laughs> Mary, Mary needs to be uh, in a whole bunch of places at the same time, uh, ringing her bell or ringing other people's bells and saying, Hey, look, 
Uh, there's a percentage of people out here that has missing money and you don't even know that it's missing. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe that's where they got the old adage. You never, you never miss it if you didn't have it or something. You, you know, I, I don't know right. where it comes from. And pe the common thing people will say is, oh, there's nobody who owes me money. Is there a place that shows how much I owe people? I said, yes, it's called the credit bureau. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> wow. Uh, and, and this, this money that's missing could come from almost anywhere, any source. Forgotten bank accounts, uh, checking accounts, certificate of deposit, stocks that have had no activity on it. Um, there was a guy who was living overseas. He had stock in a company. The company took off. He wanted to pat, uh, cash in his stocks. And they had been turned over to the state and sold when the state got them. Um, and the state had the money for him. But it was, it was a fraction of what the stocks were then worth. And he, like a lot of other people, had no idea that you have to have customer-initiated activity on your account. That's the key that keeps it from going um, to the unclaimed property office. The largest single payout in U.S. history was for 30, over $32 million from a stock claim in, in Connecticut. On That's my goal to be looking at, at my balance sheet going. Yeah. Seems like I'm short <laughs> and be missing $32 million. $32 million. Uh, mm -hmm. My goodness. Now, in, in, in that particular case, I can see the person on the receiving end uh, being very, very, very happy. and uh, the, Or very annoyed with their financial people. Well, How did you let this happen? That's that's true. Because if you have thirty two million dollars that gets turned over to the state, well, I'd be a little annoyed with the financial people. <laughs> yeah, that 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 that's true. How did this? How in the world did this ever happen? Mm -hmm. uh, how about cities? Uh, can, can you search in cities and towns uh, for missing money? Uh, like people that live in small towns or or or, or small areas, uh, can they actually do a search in their own vicinity to see if there's any missing money? Um, I I'm not really sure of any state that has that capability. However, as far as cities and county and states go, California has just enacted legislation that they can um, return money to cities, like the city of Sacramento. Um, that they can return that without the city having to file a claim. So it's city, county, town, village, county. They all have missing money. <laughs> Here's something I just, just thought I'd ask. If, mm -hmm. if, if someone comes up with some missing money, do they come after them for taxes? For savings bonds, they do. Um, whatever sa savings bonds you're entitled to, they will take income tax out before they send you the check. But as far as the rest of it, I that's up to you to report it. I don't think any of them um, report to the IRS. I, I I would think that when a state has to uh, turn loose of some some of their pennies in the bucket. Uh, mm -hmm that as the pennies went out, uh, there would be a trailer behind them with, with uh, a slip or a ticket, you, you know. Uh, uh -huh. But I, I, I was just wondering about that. So once again, if somebody wants to start looking for missing money, where do they start? Unclaimed.org. And as far as professional finders, they may say, we can get your money for you quicker. No, they can't. Because when it gets to the state unclaimed property site, it goes in a pile with the rest of the stuff. It's not like, oh, this one's from a finder. We have to do this one quickly. No, you have to give them all the information they need. So by that point, why are you giving away 20% or whatever they want to charge you? This mm. makes no sense. So the professional 
what do you call them? The professional finders. Professional finders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the professional finders, they're going to do what you're capable of doing on your own. Mm -hmm. that, exactly. That and and so if if you do it on your own, if you put some leg work to it and some some elbow grease, mm -hmm. uh, then what finders keepers, uh, and you don't have, to, yeah, you don't you don't have to split it unintended, with, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you don't have to split it with Tom or Betty over here uh, for doing the same thing that, that you could have done on your own. Yeah. Right. And some of the states have a limitation on what a finder can charge. I do have that information in the back of the book. Um, and sometimes it's really hard to find. Like, I think New Jersey's unclaimed property law is like 249 pages when I looked. And the stuff on professional finders was on page 247. So... Yeah. It's not easy to find. So, so you've basically done research on every state. Yes. Wow. And you've done research on the states, on the feds. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, my goodness. Royalties, um, performance royalties. Like I said, um, the different aspects of that. Lim uh, oil, timber. Oklahoma has like this little gray zone that money goes to before it gets turned over to the state. Wow. For uh, royalties like oil and gas. And in your book, you have uh, under each state, for instance, Iowa, Great Iowa Treasure Hunt, Lucas State Office Building and the address and the telephone number. Uh, finders, fees are limited to 15%. Yeah, it's in each, each it's under each state listing here. Uh -huh. Uh, that, that, that's amazing. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, here's ours in Delaware, Delaware Bureau of Unclaimed Property, Department of Finance, Division of Revenue, <laughs> uh, state cheater. I mean, state S G. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, that, that slip of the tongue there, uh, updated annually end of October finders, no rules, no rules. So, uh, they can do whatever they want, whatever. They, they can get away with. They take you to the cleaners here. Woo! Wow, uh, that, that's amazing. But every every state is listed in here with their their address, their titles, uh, when it's updated, the whole nine yard telephone number. Man, Mary, you have put a massive, massive amount of work. Uh, and and the amazing thing is is here's credit cards and accounts receivables and retails and license oh my goodness i have a very comprehensive list for change of name or change of address as yeah. well as if you are an executor of a will and some of the things with change of name or address doesn't involve money like if your pet is microchipped and you move uh -huh. please change the address with the people that have the microchip so your dog can be reunited with you wow uh i mean i mean listen ladies and gentlemen you need you need to get this book. Tips to prevent your money from going to the state. Oh boy, I'm. I'm done. My goal is to make my book obsolete. I, I know that's counterintuitive for an author, but my goal is to make sure that people have every tool they need to keep their money from going to the state, so that they don't have to go chase it. Wow. Uh, and you got deadlines to file a RICA claim. Uh, mm hmm. Uh, here's even different countries, Asia, Malaysia, India, it goes on and on and on and on. Uh, and, and I, I've got the address up there on the screen of where you can get Mary's books. Uh, and it's the fourth, the fourth edition. Uh, the other, any of the other ones, the used ones do not have current information. Yeah. And that one was written, what, 2010, I think, wasn't it? Uh, the first one was 2010. The last update was 2014. Okay. So that's five years ago. It's like 50 years in the world of unclaimed property. That's right. So in this fourth edition come out when? In the summertime sometime? August 30th. August 30th. My oh my. The little book of missing money. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, uh, if, if you want to get a heads up and a head start, uh, you get this this book i i've got the first one that you wrote mary uh uh and I, I was looking through it after we got together 
and begin to set up the date and all that good stuff. I got it out and uh, I was thinking, my, oh, my, uh, the girl has done a tremendous, tremendous amount of research. And I got I got to tell you, you're on this girl. I am. I love this. Like I said, you before I do any interview, I say a prayer. God, please let the person who has been praying for a miracle that needs to hear this, please let them be tuned in. Please let them find this information. And I just put it out. And, and, and the, I, I hope that the right person, people are listening. And the amazing thing about, about this live stream thing now is uh, when we're done tonight, uh, now we, we're streaming in, into uh, the Espen Lob Show page, and we're streaming up to Twitter. I always say Twitter. I said this the other night. I always say up to Twitter. I don't know where Twitter's at, but we're streaming, <laughs> we're streaming into Twitter. Uh, then when this is over with, we will download the video, and we'll ship it up to YouTube, and we'll send it over to Pete. Harry and Bill and you know all, all those people and then we'll take the audio out uh and bring it out and we'll put that up on the air and send it to Pete and Bob and and you know Bill and Joe so uh I I the magic starts when we go live and it just it just don't stop and God only it's knows. a pebble in the pond yeah you the, never know how far the ripples are going to reach and maybe somebody We'll hear this and look and not find anything, but they'll tell somebody else, mm -hmm. and that person will find something. So, you never know. Wow, wow, and I, I believe, and I believe miracles still happen, Mary. I, I do too. I do this with the heart of a nurse from caring about people, and it's it takes a little bit of my time. That's all it takes. <laughs> There's passion. We can hear your heartbeat. Yes, there is. I yes. love this. Yes. And if I can hear somebody's heartbeat, I know it's for real. And Miss Mary, I heard your heart beating seven years ago. I think it's even beating louder now. Uh, I mean, you're, you're just very kind. You're just fired up, charged up. And the, the great thing is, is you're out to help people. That, Absolutely. That, that's I amazing. consider myself a consumer advocate more than anything else that's amazing that's amazing and that that is to be complimented and and i, I tip my hat to you i'd really tip it to Thank you I didn't have my headphones on but I tip <laughs> my hat off to you barry uh listen you're a good friend you are really a super super duper whooper whopper lady <laughs> uh, and, and and we've been friends for quite a while and I, yes. I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you're doing. And I wish you only the best. And I just pray God keeps his hand on you. I really uh, do. I, I am blessed. I love doing this. So I am blessed to be able to do this. And you, young lady, please stay in touch. Absolutely. All righty. And you're off to a journey. And I, and, and I, I, I wish you the best. I really do. And listen, you're coming right past my neck of the woods sometime. So yes, we'll have to meet in person. That's right. Get I'll be in DC. I work as a tra I, I work as a travel nurse. I'm the only travel nurse that will come to a hospital, go to the chief financial officer, and say, "I found some money for you." <laughs> <laughs> Man, you you'd think that that you would have offers all across the country. <laughs> and then roll the red carpet out and say, Mary's coming and she's going to bring us some money. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, they're waiting for you, Mary. But listen, <laughs> you're coming through our neck of the woods. So good. If you have time, opportunity, whatever, you holler. I, I will. I, you holler. And uh, we'll have a cup of tea or uh, a spot of tea, as they okay. say. Okay. Okay. All right, Mary. God bless you. Thank and you so much, George. Thank you for coming on the show. And I'll I'll push this little book of missing money. <laughs> okay, the woman behind the book. That's right. The woman behind the book. <laughs> and I'm gonna put you behind the book one more time. Okay. She's wow. going behind the book. <laughs> She's behind the book. <coughs> Thank you, Mary. God bless you. Thank you, George. <laughs>
Oh, my, my. What a delight. What a delight. The Little Book of Missing Money, the fourth edition. Wow. Just keeping up with it is, is uh, that's a 24-7 for me. My goodness gracious. And then doing what she does, uh, it's a ministry. She has a ministry that there could be called nothing less. It is a God-given ministry. Uh, what that lady's doing, not only ministering to the sick, to the body, but, man, she's ministering to people, and she's helping them along the way. Whew. Hey, we got a lot going on here at George Espen Love Show. We are incorporating, as we go along, uh, our live stream with the radio show. We're incorporating that. Uh, we are uh, finding ways. Uh, we have, uh, lack of a better term, we have the ability to play uh, our, our music and so on and so forth, our intros. Uh, we'll be putting them on. Uh, I'm I'm used to something coming on uh, for years. I'm I'm used to the to the the music blasting out and the crowd roaring and, and Charlie. Uh, Charlie feels a little forsaken, but uh, uh, and I'm used to Charlie, uh, you know, and all that and and the, and the get up and go at the opening of a show. Uh, and we're gonna have that. We're we're gonna have that. We're we're moving into this thing uh slowly uh we're we're getting more comfortable with it and we we've got some some great great things planned uh, i spoke with a man this morning uh some of you may have known or heard of uh, his name is anthony gribbs former linebacker from uh uh philadelphia phillies yeah philadelphia phillies philadelphia eagles and he played for the Cleveland Browns. And then when he came out of football, he uh, was very instrumental with the Steelers as a conditioning coach and so on and so forth. Uh, he's with the NFL PA. Uh, so uh, I had a long, fun, thrilling conversation with him early this morning. And then again, probably all oh, 45 minutes before uh, we came on the air. Uh, we are planning some ventures together. Uh, tremendous, tremendous human being. I'm telling you, this this man uh, got a smile on his face and 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 uh, lighthearted, uh, and, and and a man that wants to help people. So we're we're working on some things together. And uh, in fact, he's going to be on the show. Uh, next tuesday night I, I don't have my thingy handy andy here but he'll be on the show with us next tuesday night uh and uh, we'll be introducing him and he'll share with you some of the things that we're going to be doing uh so that is that is in the works and we thank him for it uh we're working with an individual out of uh out in california uh, putting on some uh segments that are really going to be interesting, uh, action packed, interesting, uh, call it what you want. So that that's coming down. The, I mean, there is so much happening. Doors are opening and we're so thankful for that. Uh, people coming on board. Uh, it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful time around here. Uh, I, I got to keep up with this stuff, you know, I mean, just keep moving, keep moving because, Things and life here at the Funny Farm are just speeding right along, faster than a speeding bullet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends, Romans, and countrymen, uh, <laughs> wow. Thank you, Mary, one more time for coming back and being on the show, The Little Book of Missing Money. And there on the screen, you can see uh, the website. Uh, it's so long because... <clears throat> she wants you to see and make sure to get the fourth edition, the fourth edition, the little book of missing money, quick and easy guide to finding money that is rightfully yours. I want to thank everybody, everybody that tuned in. I want to thank everybody uh, that came into, I, I call it the chat room. I don't know what else to call it. I, I guess it's the chat room, uh, the gathering room, 
the meeting place. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, hello, 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 hello uh, to all those people. Uh, and for the people that are going to be watching this, uh, man, I, I'm telling you, I, I just amazed that uh, we do this thing live and then people just continue to watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it. And we, and we're so thankful for it. We're going to have some musicians and, uh, uh, some folks back on that are going to be able to do some, uh, things right out of their studio, uh, where they're operating out of right out of their studio. And we're going to be, we're going to be able to go right in there with them and watch them and listen to them. And we can tap our feet, snap our fingers, bob our head, and shake our booties right along with them. So uh, there's a lot of things going on. And listen, gang, I really thank you. I thank you. I appreciate you so very much for hanging in there with us while we're making this transition. Uh, uh, just hang on because this, this vehicle is picking up speed and she is rocking and rolling. So buckle up with us. We're going to have a blast. And God only knows where we're going to end up at. But hang in there with us. And thank you so much for tuning in tonight. And if you know someone that missed this tonight, tell them to tune in to that goofy Espen love. Uh, they, if nothing else, they can look at me and laugh. So uh, uh, it'll brighten up their day. So good night, everybody. God bless you. And thank you for being a part of this tonight. See ya.